Let's go to our guest, Greg Caton. Now, let me give you a quick background. He's, he's joining us by Skype. This is a big deal. You know how Edward Snowden says uh, he may be seeking a, asylum in Ecuador? Well, <laughs> that may not work out for him in the way that he thinks it will. And the reason is because the U.S. State Department has a track record of kidnapping American citizens in Ecuador who are breaking no laws whatsoever, but that America wants to bring back to America to persecute for its own political reasons. Now, this has already happened to this gentleman, Greg Caton, a man who I've known for many years because I wrote about him when this happened several years ago. He joins us by Skype now. Thank you, Greg, and welcome to The Alex Jones Show. Thank you for having me, Mike. Well, it's great to have you on, Greg, and I would like you to lay out briefly the story of what happened to you because back a couple of years ago when it happened, no one believed us. Today, people believe more of the rogue shadow operation. So I want you to lay out what happened to you so that people can get this story and now they will believe it. Well, I um, <clears throat> actually a kidnapping attempt was made against me in November of 2008. So uh, I knew they would probably try it again. It, ha what happened is I had a, a business associate by the name of Doctor, the name of Doctor Neville Solomon, and these geniuses at the State Department, because I guess we're the same height, gringos, we kind of stand out, uh, kind of stood out in Guayaquil. Actually, because I had been living there, confused him for me and actually kidnapped him and his 15-year-old son Michael. And only after interviewing them and uh, for a period of 30 minutes, we were able to figure out, oh, my God, we've kidnapped the wrong guy. And when you say they, so, were these the State Department officials or had they no, bribed the, locals? The, the, the protocol they normally use is, uh, and this is done all over the world, by the way. Most people don't know this has been codified in uh, actually all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. When I was uh, kidnapped and brought back to the United States in Louisiana, I had a defense attorney by the name of Randall McCain out of Lafayette, Louisiana, who defended me. And one of the first things he told me on the very first meeting, he says, you don't see, because I was saying, this was all illegal. Can't you do anything about this as part of my demons? He says, no, I can't do anything about it. The U.S. Is co the US Supreme Court has codified it. We will kidnap anybody anywhere we want for any reason. We don't need a justification. Uh, all all this talk about extradition, this and extradition, that and political asylum, it's all smoke and mirrors. I got to tell you right now, it's all smoke and mirrors. So, great. This is yeah. big breaking news right right now. Um, right. And sorry about the, the delay if I'm talking over you because you're joining us from Ecuador, a little bit of delay in the Skype. But this is big breaking news, folks. Not only is the United States government running death squads that we know assassinate people like Breitbart and Michael Hastings, and, and many others, Gary Webb, I think, was another case. They are also running globally kidnapping schemes against innocent Americans like like you, Greg, because again, you were you were engaged in selling a rainforest herbal topical salve, like a skin cream, that was perfectly legal to sell in Ecuador. You were breaking no laws well, we whatsoever. We still do. That's the whole thing about it. We we still do. I mean. Uh you know, we sell Amazonian, uh, you know, medicinal herbs uh, ship all over the world. Uh, it was it was never illegal. In fact, actually, actually, not even the 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 overt reason that they claimed they were kidnapping. They said it was because of a probation violation. And the and the truth is, is that I had someone while I was in prison the first time, an employee who embezzled over twenty thousand uh, dollars from us. And after I got out, I did a, an audit of our books and discovered it all. And when she found out that I was going to go to the authorities, she immediately went and started uh, talking to prosecutors trying to get my probation revoked with the, the uh, w under the logic that, well, if I can put this guy away in prison, no matter how many criminal acts I committed, I'll be able to get it all covered up and I'll even get uh, the support of prosecutors. So and by you, the way, you were which, set up. Oh, completely set up. And I knew I was being set up. So here I am in a room in downtown Guayaquil with the guy that's right under President Correa at the time it was the, the fellow who was the Minister of Government and his name was Gustavo Lorea. I'm sitting there with him and I'm sitting with the governor of Guayas province and people who don't know much about Ecuador. Uh, Guayas province out of the 24 provinces in Ecuador, it is the wealthiest. It is the center of commerce. Guayaquil is like the New York City of 
Ecuador, except right. far more influential. It, it's like it, it's you know it's the 800 pound gorilla commercially speaking in the Ecuadorian economy. So, and they're assuring me, giving uh, you know, telling me, do you really believe? As if I'm an insane person, right? As if I must be insane for suggesting that over something as uh, menace is, is something as insignificant as a as, as a as a probation violation, which I didn't commit in the first place, by the way, uh, which was supposedly that I was making H three O, the product that I was manufactured that, that I had in uh, uh, the United States. That, that they're gonna, it, it, it's like it's one step away from saying we need to kid, kidnap this guy. We're the United States government. Uh, but but the, we're going to the, the crane. We're, this guy has an overdue parking ticket. We need to kidnap him and bring him back. <laughs> right. He's overdue. We're going to get that fifty bucks. Okay. Right. It's, but they but they a, did. And by the way, uh, back your microphone off your mouth a little bit. Getting oh, a little sorry. bit of static there. A little little hot. But they did come kidnap you, which astonished the Ecuadorian officials. I know Correa himself was was jaw droppingly astonished that the U.S. would violate international law, would actually bring agents in there to conduct an armed operation against you in your own driveway to kidnap you, take you out of the country illegally, while at the same time people like Obama accuse Hong Kong of violating the rule of law for not turning over Edward Snowden. I mean, what hypocrisy. Well, it's, it's beyond hypocrisy. On April 17th of 2012, the, there was a, a, a committee here. It's, a, it's an immigration committee that decides difficult cases. And what the ruling of the Ecuadorian government was is that what happened to me was completely without legal foundation, which is kind of a sweet, euphemistic way of saying, hey, United States government, you were rogues. You committed a rogue operation, and everything you did to this man is illegal. Now, what's the proof of that? I'm just kind of saying this on your, what is the proof of that? Well, the proof of that is that I'm here because in every, any country in the world, if you are deported for felony, any kind of felony, if you're deported, you're not coming back. You're not welcome back in a country that once you've been deported for legal reasons. So the, you know, right. what they did is they, the, all the, the, the mention of my deportation and the records of the Ecuadorian government have been completely expunged. Why? Because it was illegal. And it was illegal fact, kidnapping. You you are an entrepreneur, a very successful one, I would say, who is, in fact, helping the Ecuadorian economy, bringing value to their, to their rainforest, the, the, the uh, renewable resources, the medicinal resources that people are being paid to harvest, and your company is, is packaging them and, and shipping them out. You're, you're bringing jobs and also exporting health products to the other nations of the world that don't have the the climate to have a rainforest. In fact, I mean, you should be given a medal or something by Korea for for a humanitarian award for what well, you're doing. He's I mean, got a serious. Well, I, I don't. Korea's got a tough job. I mean, yeah, I know. I'm just well, saying. I'm just saying. You're a good guy. You're not a criminal guy. Right, and the very the very fact that that uh, and then and the other proof. Like people sometimes raise their eyebrow when I say that. Everything that was put on when I was put on the Interpol left, uh, red list and my name was. Uh, oh yeah, I want to uh, talk about Interpol. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know Osama, my first cousin, Osama bin. Laden. <laughs> right. They had they yeah. had your face right next <laughs> right. to Osama bin Laden and other like serial killers and war criminals. The State Department the proof, managed to get you put on Interpol. Every, the proof that everything that the FDA and Interpol said was completely false is the fact that I'm here because I had my passport renewed in. August of 2011. If I had had any kind of pending uh, criminal charge that is even closely, remotely similar to the things that the FDA and Interpol were saying, they wouldn't have even uh, renewed my passport. Anyone who's ever gotten a passport knows you you can't even be you can't even be arrears on your child support payments right. now and right. get a United States passport. Let alone have you know the criminal charges for hurting people with you know because you're no, but but they got. They got their pound of flesh out of you because they they put you in prison for what was it almost two years in Louisiana? Well, the total time was twenty one months. You know they 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 give you fifteen percent off. They give you a fig leaf of good time and so, so it was they put you in prison months. and and you 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 had to you had to do the prison time and then when you got out they renewed your passport and you went back to Ecuador and Ecuador welcomed you back in and there you are now running running an, an admirable business yet again. Correct. Correct. <laughs> it's I, incredible. I think. What we see, what disturbs me, and I don't know that this has really been even conveyed to your audience, the rapidity with which it's getting worse. Now, for instance, in my case, at least, I can say I had the privilege of having a kangaroo court. It was all nonsense. The State Department is there basically dictating to the Ecuadorian judge just exactly how to violate the law. And by the way, I don't know what's ever happened to that judge, but I know that uh, 
the you the, it's it's they they'll never disclose to me what disciplinary measures they took against the people who were paid off on this side to uh to do yeah, this. Yeah, Greg, I want to I want to make sure we get though to the other kidnappings that are taking place. There. Well, yeah, I, yeah. Let's talk about James Martin Malone. This is yeah. a guy who, unlike myself, James Martin Malone was a, a a guy. He's a few years younger than myself. I think he's something like fifty four now. Anyways, in nineteen ninety, roughly twenty three years ago, Marty was doing a job for somebody. He was transporting things along in his car. Uh, the uh, and and he got caught up in some kind of uh, in a in a drug bust for transporting drugs. And the, late, the prosecutor has since admitted there, there's really no evidence that this guy ever knew, had conscious knowledge that of all the things he had in his car, that it included cocaine. Anyways, make a long story short, guy gets 22 years and uh, finds a way to get out, uh, or maybe he's on bail, I can't remember, but he gets to Ecuador and he lives here safely for a period of 22 years. And by the way, this this was big news down in Ecuador. I knew this guy personally. His his wife was the general manager of one of my companies, uh, one, an Ecuadorian company that I had. So I'm, I'm very, very intimate. This is not hearsay. This is not because I read it in the paper down here. This is somebody I know, I knew. We they lunch together regularly. And his wife. So was what happened? What did they do? The guy, th th this guy gets into a tiff with his wife. I guess they were separated or something. And she knew that he had legal issues back in the United States. So he gets a hold of the local officials there in uh, Santa Elena, Provincia de Santa Elena, and they pick him up, stick him on a plane, and take him back. No law, no judge, no court, no nothing. All this talk I hear about, well, you know, Ecuador, they don't have an extradition treaty with the United States. It's all nonsense. It's all nonsense. So what, what we're seeing globally is a pattern of complete lawlessness where the United States government will do anything it wants, violate any law it wants. I mean, Obama's got secret kill lists. I guess they're not even that secret anymore <laughs> of Americans that, that he's going to have killed. Drone strikes on civilian you know, weddings and parties all over the Middle East, killing women and children. You know, and, and now we've got that it has come out that the U.S. government is spying on its EU allies. You know, the United States is getting a reputation for being a lawless, rogue nation, kind of like the way we used to think of North well, that's what Korea. We see down here, I mean, and we see it in many different ways. And and by the way, I'm not saying anything that's counter to, to the official message of the Ecuadorian government. You hear President Correa, I mean, he gives a weekly address here on Saturdays. You remember that, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember listening to some of that. And, you know, he's constantly railing. And on the one hand, you know, he, he it's not that Ecuador is in any kind of unfriendly posture to the United States. You know, there, there's a very, very, Ecuadorians go to Miami all the time. I mean, there's, a, there's, const, there's trade back and forth. There's very good feelings. But it's like the relationship between Ecuador and the United States is kind of like the wife who says to her husband, you will not disrespect me. You're not going to call me a bitch. If you fight with me, you're going to fight fair. You're going to respect my feelings. You're going to respect my opinions. And you're not going to disrespect me. You know, it's that kind of a thing. And so you constantly right, have right. this thing. It's not like Ecuador is saying, you know, we hate the United States. The, 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 you know, no, you know, not at Ecuador, all. Not, but Ecuador has made it very, very, he, you know, he's a graduate, as you know, of the University of Illinois in, uh, in economics. He calls right. himself a half gringo. He refers to himself kind of a affectionately as a but half Rango. Let's, His mother lives let's in Orange County, back, California. Let's bring it back to Snowden, though, Greg. Yeah. Uh, what would happen if Snowden, if Ed Snowden goes to Ecuador to seek asylum there? I want your assessment of what exactly would happen to him there because it is very likely that the Ecuadorian government cannot protect him from, let's say, a U.S. Navy SEAL team or something like that if the, if the U.S. really wants to get him. But let's talk about that when we come back with Greg Caton the Amazon rainforest herbal formulator who was kidnapped by U.S. State Department authorities. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, 
Why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all in one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. All right, so this is big breaking news. This is the Alex Jones Show, and we have an exclusive interview with a man who was kidnapped from Ecuador by the United States government uh, over the crime of selling medicinal herbal products that help people get healthier, <laughs> if you can believe that. I, and this, there's nothing I won't believe anymore uh, in terms of what the government will do to oppress freedom. So uh, the, the question to you, Greg, is what, what would happen if uh, Edward Snowden actually were granted asylum in Ecuador and located, relocated to Ecuador, do you think he would be safe there? Could Correa, uh, could Correa's administration protect him? Well, I, I can, I, I'm, I can only give you my opinion based on what I've experienced here. Others that I've known have been kidnapped and so forth. Uh, he wouldn't have any semblance of a life that you and I would call free. I mean, he would have to be under some kind of military. He'd have to be guarded. He'd have to, because uh, based on the fact that this is such apparently such a uh, a big piece of theater t for the U.S. government, you had Biden down here actually telling Korea, "You will not give this guy political asylum." And basically, what Korea did, this was in the news here. He was very respectful to Biden. He said, "I respect your opinions. If he ever comes to Ecuador, if he does, you will be the first ones we call." to get your input on the subject, but the final decision must be ours. It's again, it's again the thing of right. respect our sovereignty, okay? Respect that we are a sovereign nation. So my opinion, based on what I've seen here, one of two things would happen if he wasn't in some kind of almost a military prison with, with you know, uh, with the uh, special forces protection. One, he'd either be kidnapped, they'd pay somebody who's corrupt within the, the police force to kidnap him, very much like they did in my case, or, uh, you know, a la kill John, John Perkins, they're going to send in the jackals. It's going to be yeah. one or the other. But Greg, he's not uh, going to have a life that you and I would call Greg, free. Alex is joining us on the phone. Pop in for a second for an important mm -hmm. comment on this on this topic. Stay on the line with us, Greg. Alex, you're, go ahead. Yeah, sure. He's welcome in the five minutes to have this segment to finish up the story with a riveting radio. I just want to put some context to this. Can you guys hear me good? Yeah, you're good. All right. I'm, I'm taking the kids fishing today. I appreciate you doing the show. I'm coming back to work tonight. Look. There's an article on DrudgeReport.com on the right-hand side. Top story. Uh, Russian troops and Russian security forces to advise at U.S. public events. What is this about? This is about global governance, State Department Memorandum 7277, international treaty, where the diplomatic community, mercenaries, uh, Interpol police, can go anywhere in the world and grab anybody they want and ignore extradition laws. And that's how Americans can be visiting Germany. And they say the Holocaust didn't happen and they get arrested and put in prison for five years. Now, whether you think that happened or not, I think Hitler was bad and killed a bunch of people. They use cases like that to set the precedent where now they're going to arrest you if you deny man-made global warming. And they're calling for arresting us. So this is global government where we have no rights. And these multinational globalists can even send in mercenaries. To right. Get, and, and that's why we have Mexican troops at Katrina. That's why U.S. troops are in Canada uh, for the Olympics patrolling the streets. Well, the same so death squads... The, the yeah. same death squads, Alex, that went out, they sent after Hastings or, or Breitbart or the assassins. I mean, they, they are operating globally. Yeah, exactly. It came out in mainstream U.S. news the back of the paper five years ago. That former Latin American death squads hired by the CIA, more than 10,000 of them, were brought in to run death squads in Baghdad. This is a global mafia that does whatever it wants. I remember reading National News about this guy's case, where, where the FDA just wanted to persecute somebody for selling a salve. I mean, give me a break. Uh, and so they went after him. And, and so I wanted to be able to finish the story, but I think it's important for people just to know in the context of Hastings, uh, you know, dying with the death squad and, and, and Aaron Schwartz and, and, and the D.C. madam and on and on and on.
Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. And we're back at the top of the second hour. This is the Alex Jones Show. Mike Adams filling in for Alex today, who was just joining us in the last segment with some very important points. We are interviewing Greg Caton, and Alex mentioned how we are dealing with a global lawless mafia that will run kidnapping operations anywhere it wants in any country that respects no law, no sovereignty whatsoever. Remember the work of John Perkins, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, where he described exactly what they did in Central and South America to assassinate leaders, to overthrow governments, to put governments in debt to uh, U.S. interests. And this kind of thing continues, and Greg Caton joins us for the rest of this segment. He is one of the many victims of the U.S.-run international kidnapping operations, and this is an exclusive interview here on Infowars.com. So, Greg, uh, before you got interrupted there, you were finishing your assessment of what you think might happen to Edward Snowden if he is granted asylum in Ecuador. You want to finish that that thought? Yeah, it's simply that uh, it, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't be a free man. He's not going to be like you know if I want to leave here and I want to go down to you know coffee tree or, or one of the other gringo hangouts here and talk to my friends because here in Cuenca you've got you know 5,000 Americans who are down here by the way it would surprise you even you who and I know you'd lived here uh, to know how many people are flooding down here and, and and the percentage of them that are here because of just the frightening events that you and Alex have been reporting <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know it's, and um you know, I mean, I personally, just by way of example, I personally, this is a very close person, I personally know of a, uh, a rancher in, in Montana that moved down here because uh, he went hunting and he ran into a railroad spur and saw with his own eyes, he, what the hell is this? He found boxcars, three levels high, shackles all around the perimeter, every other boxcar had a guillotine in it. And of course, you know, he, he's just got this huge, gigantic WTF going on in the back of his mind. He got out. He said, yeah, any that's country funny. would we, do this. We keep hearing oh. these rumors of guillotines, and I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, show, well, doesn't anybody YouTube, have pictures or something? Well, there's YouTubes of them. You to just type in guillotine and, and you use the YouTube filters for the last month. There's more, there's, there is more of them surfacing, uh, yes. I'm not sure I can even spell it because according to the Clorox Corporation, I'm a retard since I'm a male. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. It's, it's getting ridiculous. But uh, people, what, I think the most important message as it pertains to my case, as it pertains to the case of James Martin Malone, who was taken from here without even so much as seeing any official. I just grabbed him and took him, you know, mafia style. The most important thing is for people to know that any time you see the word extradition, it's part of a non-existent mythology. So it's a mythology. Right. We don't have extraditions anymore. We have kidnappings. They're not extraditions. It's a shadow system of injustice that operates in parallel with the delusional fake justice system that's just for show for the public. But underneath it all, there's this shadow rogue system of criminal mafia global government. That's what's really running the show. That's what's really, and you know what? They, they know that they know that down here. They know that down. Here. You know, they, there's, you know, I haven't met any officials, and I've, they know what's going on. You know, I met, I met. I'm not going to say his name on the air because he's well known here. He he very closely became the president of Ecuador himself. He is currently one of Chris's ministers, and I was up in his offices, and he took me to his conference room, which he and I alone, no con no security people, none of his subordinates, nobody, just he and I. And Got between, one minute left. Okay, anyways, the long and short of it is he said to me, you know, we, we, we know this is going on. And he compared my case, I was actually stunned, to St. John of the Cross. He said, this was the man that was tortured and put in prison and everything else, and out of it, St. John of the Cross wrote the most magnificent literature ever penned in the Spanish language. So th wow. they, they know that, that the prison system in the U.S. Is, is very hokey. They know it, and they express it in well, a variety of ways. The, the website for Greg Caton is herbhealers.com. Did, did I get that right, Greg? Right, H-E-R-B, -E -E and then healers.com. Yeah. Okay, herbhealers.com. If you want to take advantage of his fascinating Amazon uh, herbal products, uh, just, just giving him a plug for thanking him for coming on the show. 
Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.